Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about PicoTrade and why I believe it is a scam and how it tricked many Magic players of their cards. Now before I begin, I will say this. My history of PicoTrade is I don't like it. I have never created an account. When they first started, within the first year, they asked me to promote it. I said no. They offered me points. I said no. Then more recently, they asked me as well as other YouTubers to promote it. I instead made a video saying why MTG YouTubers don't promote it, which right after the video was made, a large MTG YouTuber promoted it. Now, from a economic perspective, it is very clear why it would never work out the way that it was set up initially. So people got points for doing dumb stuff. People got points for promoting it. There is a story that a MTG YouTuber promoted it and got 5,000 of its, his followers to subscribe. Therefore, 5,000 times 300, which is 300 is the base that someone gets. That is 1.5 million points or $15,000 of cards then that people, YouTubers, MTG celebrities who have been promoting it for many, many months before rejecting it recently, they benefited from it. They didn't send cards out, they only received. Or if they did send cards out, it was as PR and they received far more. I mean, when your account says 1.5 million points, it's pretty easy to get whatever you want. Now, the problem is very simple. The problem is you get points for being an MTG celebrity, you get points for signing someone up, you get points for signing up yourself. So what don't you get points for doing? If you're a content writer, you get points for being writing content. If you are a blogger, you get points for do, giving them a backlink for SEO purposes, which is to promote themselves. If you are a YouTuber, you get points for promoting their pre-release pre-release hype that you can send pre-release cards earlier than TCG player at the time. And that's what they wanted me to do, promote that program. And you get points for joining. So if everyone's getting points, no one's getting points. So think about that very carefully. If a YouTuber is getting 1.5 million points for just making a video and promoting it and having a, a link where you could subscribe, and they sign up 5,000 people, they sign up so many people that Pucart Trade creates a landing page. They create a separate page to thank all the people who signed up. And all those people get points as well. So not only is a YouTuber getting 1.5 million points, those people that have signed up as an aggregate have probably more, like 1.75 million points. So in total, 3.25 million points have entered the system and not a single point is left. Is that not a problem? Here is the solution they should have implemented and they shouldn't have cheated, they should not have they should not have done the roundabout promotion that they have done where if you posted a good comment on Reddit about them, they would give you points. That's crazy. That's insane that they are giving points out for that. If you produce a piece of content, if you are the main quality control, which we're gonna talk about later, you get points. Everyone got paid in points. Well, not everyone, right? There was a Kickstarter to pay a quote developer. Now, I'm a developer, I know how much development cost. If you wanna see what I took me about 15 hours to develop, click on mtgline.com, it's not ready yet, and I'm not going to promote it. It's just kind of a fun little development exercise I wanted to do, but it is live. I know how much development cost, and they either they underestimated or overestimated. It's hard, it's hard for me to explain this, but if they delivered everything on time in a timely manner, they actually needed more money. But if they delivered it in the BS manner that they did, they could have done it by themselves without hiring someone, in my opinion. I mean, their team is excellent, right? So now they created this membership due and they should have this membership due the whole time. So every amount, every month, 
a common member, which the large, large majority of people are common members. They're not. Okay, so if you're not a common member, you're actually paying physical money to join this program. But if you are a free, quote, free member, you are a common member, and therefore every month you will pay a 300 point fee. Now you might say, oh, that's not very bad. That's like $3 a month, right? And you can offset that by buying Puka Sealed and um, doing other interesting stuff. However, most of the Puka Trade members. I would assume the large majority at this point are inactive members. Therefore, their accounts are just going to dwindle and dwindle and they have lost everything. At this point in time, what can you get? I have seen a report that a Puka point is worth 30 cents on the dollar, right? That's insane. For, that is hyper, that is hyper inflation, but it makes sense. If every MTG YouTuber or celebrity is bringing in three million plus points into the system and no points are coming out of the system and everyone's getting paid in points from content writers to web developers to people who post positively on Reddit, then where are all these points going to previously? Now they go into this mana sink, which is 300 points a month for all the common members, which makes sense. If you assume they have 100,000 common members, which according to them, they probably do, that is 100,000 times 300. That's insane. Is that 30 million points? That is insane. That's such a huge number. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. 100,000 times 300. So that is 30 million points. If we believe a Puka point is worth a cent, which it's not, but let's assume it is because Puka says it is. That is $300,000 leaving the system every month unless the users do something about it. All right, so let's talk about the guarantees. And so over a year ago and before FutureSight, PicoTrade got rid of the 100% trade guarantee. It's still being advertised on the homepage. You can actually go on the homepage right now. I took a screenshot of it previously. So trade with confidence, the 100% trade guarantee covers all loss or damage packages in the mail. Our amazing support team have you covered 24 seven. So what does this mean? How are they gonna cover you? They just give you points. Let's say I receive counterfeits in the mail. I'm like, oh shit, I received counterfeits in the mail. I'm not gonna pay, Pico, do something about it. Well, Pico would say, hmm, well, it's too hard for us to determine if it's counterfeits. We need to give you points. We're gonna refund you the points. So in addition to everyone and their grandmother receiving points for doing just ridiculous stuff like posting positively on Reddit, this trade with confidence, everyone's just getting points for everything. Like, oh, my mail got lost or I, I never got sent the mail. Even if you did, oh, we'll just give you some points. So all these points are flooding into the system and no one's being paid, like minus the developers or I assume the uh, management, is no one's getting, everyone's getting paid in points. The content writers are being paid not in dollars, but in Puka points. Where did these points come from? What, what, how, if a YouTuber signs 5,000 people and those 5,000 people get 350 points and a YouTuber gets 300 points a person, that's 650 points. Where are those points going to? Answer, hyperinflation, uh, hyperinflation. So the other issue I feel is if they had the 300 points a month, it's gonna cost you 300 points a month to use our service and they had it in the beginning, that would solve all of their problems, right? If they had 100,000 members, they were, tank they were getting rid of $300,000 a month in points. 30 million points, there's no inflation anymore. Your points are gonna leave. So it's either be active or you're gonna lose your entire point account. So why did they not do that? They did not do that because they wanted to have as many users as possible. People say that they did it out of the kindness of their heart. They did not do it out of the kindness of their heart. They were trying to make money from it. And whether or not they made money, is an interesting issue. I would argue that if they were giving points so to everybody essentially, then why wouldn't they give points to themselves? 
and who could really track the points they give to themselves, right? So imagine that you are kind of a scammy person and you've set up this system which is similar to a pyramid and you're on top of the system. What would prevent you from giving yourself 100 million points or 100 billion points? And you would then get sent so many cards. You would make a fake account, you would make several fake accounts. So one of the interesting things I speak on is multi-level marketing. And I'm not sure how I got into it. One of my clients was really interested in it. I own a marketing agency and we went to Las Vegas. I had an interesting time and they asked me to speak there and it's a very big event and I'm asked to speak there every year now. And one of the core issues of multi-level marketing is you need people to believe the dream. You need them to believe in the dream. So you're not selling them the Tupperware. You're not selling them plastic containers. You're selling them their Mercedes Benz that those Tupperware represent. You're selling them the, you're not selling them the vitamin water, right? The Herbalife. You're selling them the dream that one day they will drive a Range Rover with Herbalife on it as a sticker, which, you know, actually, if they or if Herbalife gave me a Range Rover just for free, I would probably drive it. I'd be like, all right, that's fine. Um, but I mean, at the very end of the day, you have so many points and you might argue, hey, you know, these MTG celebrities, they didn't know what was going on. Why are you putting the blame on them? I'm not putting the blame on them. They did what anyone in their position would do. Get those points, get those cards and get the blank out. It's the logical conclusion of what you would do. So I don't blame the people who sponsored PicoTrade. I blame the people who founded PicoTrade. Because when they implemented this system, they wanted hyper growth. But to do that, they had to pump points in. They kept pumping points in and pumping points in, even though they knew eventually it would break it would be the straw that broke the camel's back. They still did it. They still pumped points in. And that's what I'm upset about is Pico Trade was a beautiful idea. It was amazing. It was just executed so poorly and people loved it so much. They couldn't see that the execution, that the team in place was not the team you needed. A lot of times when you have a startup, I worked at an incubator and I helped startups. When the startup, a successful startup, the original team, sometimes they need a higher outside help because they need someone who has expertise that originally they didn't need. So PicoTrade grew and grew and grew and it just outgrew the team. But they didn't, you know, they just felt empowered. They felt arrogant. If they had asked the Pico community for help designing a mana sink or a point sink, which they just designed now, I mean, $300,000 leaving the mo a month, that's enough. That's enough to eat all those MTG. So I, when I mean the MTG celebrities and YouTube promoting this, that wasn't the problem. That's not the core problem, although a lot of them knew that it would break the system. The core problem is not 3 million points coming into the system. The core problem is 3 million points cannot get out of the system. Now you have a, an, a solution which will sink 30 million points a month. 30 million points a month. That's 10 of the largest, that's probably 25 of the largest YouTubers getting 10% of their subscriber base to sign on and they could handle that. But guess what? Guess what? It took them this long to figure it out. And that is not a mistake. Everyone made money on the way out. Everyone who began PicoTrade made money. I'm certain that those people on the top of PicoTrade are still making money, otherwise they wouldn't run it. As for the development, the Kickstarter, the fundraising, I mean, you can't BS me on that, right? I develop apps all the time. I develop websites all the time for a hobby, right? Normally, I mean, I kind of stay away from... If you hired me to design a website, I would charge you an insane amount, so much that you wouldn't hire me, uh, just so I don't have to do it. But, because uh, that's not my specialty in marketing anymore. 
but I do it for fun. And to look at Pico Trade, to understand that it was a wonderful concept that people protected till the, the end. They are still protecting it today because of the concept. But the execution was so poor, so poor, so many promises were made, so few were delivered. And now the solution for the, the original solution, I believe now exists. But is it too late? And the answer is yes. Because all those YouTubers, all those celebrities, they have turned on you. They have turned on you. But if you had set up the mana sync and you were killing, you were destroying 30 million points a month, what's 3 million points, right? Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye, guys.